I will say, uh, I know, I, I know. Uh, so we got this, this, the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K G2. Why the hell it's called the G2 is beyond me. Um, I, I'm still saying <laughs> it's the G3 Pocket 6K because <laughs> the G2 was the 6K Pro. I mean, it um, makes absolutely no sense, but no sense. Whatever, right? I mean, hmm. But yeah, like as everyone's saying, like um, everyone is saying the the gyro, yeah, it's, it's, here, it's, it's here. And, and it, I, it, I, mean, I love, called this forever ago. <laughs> I know you called it forever ago, but I love that you know you called it forever ago. But then and okay, Grant, basically in the video at the one minute mark, starts going, we had a hidden feature in there. It's this gyro. It's in all the pocket 4K <laughs> all the way up, and so it's in here. And we're just now going to make it so that you can embed in 7.9 firmware beyond. You can embed the gyro data in the B-RAW file, and then unpack it inside of resolve to use the stabilization in resolve to re and oh that firmware update for resolve or that software update for resolve won't be out for like a day or two yeah yeah it's it's funny i love the fact that he used the hidden feature because i mean that's what i called it the, the secret hidden feature in the black magic cameras they didn't tell you about so uh, maybe he saw that video I, I mean i i did get a lot of push from that video for people trying to push for it and even mentioned it to them um to bob at, uh, at NAB when I did the interview with them. So very interesting. I'm interested to see how that works. And uh, I know Tim has already updated the menu. So we'll look at that here in a second, but I'll get to a couple yeah. of these questions first. Where um, a two asked, is the 6K G2 better than the 6K Pro? No, I think it has, they released the a new bit, but without ND filters. It's like, it's like getting the, the yeah. 6K, the regular pocket 6k with, but with a tilting screen and a viewfinder pretty yeah. much it, it's right? basically you just don't have the internal nd and i'm not sure it doesn't say it on the website whether the screen is the same 15,000 15,000 1500 nit screen mm -hmm. they just say you know tilting lcd screen they don't say the nits yeah, someone said it was actually like I, I saw someone say that was dimmer, um, a little bit dimmer on this one, but I don't. Something tells me that's not true. So here, here it is. Like the they barely have anything on it. Like when you click it on their website, it just takes you to, like it just takes you to that. Go it, to media. Go to, up yeah, at the top go. media. You're right. It's probably the smarter and, place to go. And then it should be that top announcement. Read the press release. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go ahead and read this. Um, it's a larger battery for longer shooting. I think that might be an extra thing. It doesn't, it's the same sensor. It's, it's on everything. Same dynamic it's, range. Yeah. It's $500 it's less. Yeah. It's literally this same NP battery right here. Mm -hmm. Uh, that you you know so it's exactly the same as the pocket 6k pro right here you can use the exact same pro battery grip and you can use the exact same viewfinder the yep. UDF. oh so this yeah they're literally saying so this is what grant petty said since the release of the black pocket cinema camera 6k pro customers have been asking for some of the features to be added to the 6k model how I thought the 6K Pro was the updated 6K model, though, right? But they were still selling the 6K. Well, I know so. they were still selling it, but like, wasn't that the one? I, I, but like, what's the difference? Like, why would you? This feels like something that they should have released at the actual moment when they release a 6K Pro in the first place, right? I feel like there's a mixture of two things. One, this is something they should have released as an alternative option if you don't want internal ND. But I also think that they probably got so much pushback and they've... Uh, did you say you had uh, your internal ND get stopped in yours? Um, yeah, I did, but that's because the airline dropped my case on the tarmac for a okay. for a uh, yeah valet bag. <laughs> so I, I think... I think some people have had issues with the mechanical internal ND is uh, again stuck or locked up maybe. So, you know, maybe they just were like, we need to just give an option without internal ND. But they already have an option without an internal ND though. I mean, 
I mean, they I get, guess they updated the body, but it, it, this is weird. It's like going backwards from <laughs> like, right, it, it's like, slightly going backwards, but you know, the improvement is you're not dealing with the Canon LP batteries, which gets you less life wise than, you know, than P's. You've got the tilting screen, which is definitely nice. You know, like I love being able to use this tilting screen mm -hmm. on it. Um, and then the viewfinder, I think, I think it's the viewfinder is a huge bonus. Oops. <laughs> Lose these all the time because, well, <laughs> yeah, freaking horrible. Oh my God. You know, like you, you can't put that on here. So, you, you know, like it's, it's, it's interesting. Like I, yeah. I'm trying they to figure just it out. Been better, yeah. So uh, Ernie here says they would have been better off announcing 7.9 and no camera. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree too because it's like, uh, mm, like what? I, I love it. Like, I love the the flexibility with it, but it's just kind of odd. Like, why not? It, this feels, and I think they released this at three thirty, or is it three thirty in the morning, four thirty in the morning, Eastern time, around like what you said, four thirty p.m. in like Australia time, whatever. Yeah. That so my to. my was two thirty a.m. Uh, is what my it, uh, Twitter like notification on my phone said so. Then I did the math, and that would be about four thirty p.m. their time mm -hmm. on a fr uh, tomorrow. Technically tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, it's. Uh, wait, where's my phone? Hmm. It's interesting it's because it's like I, there's nothing wrong. Like uh, Patrick Sterling says here, great friend of the channel. Um, I've got no problem with more of the value for the same price and the upgrade across the product line is great for sure. The The main thing is like it's weird since the 6K Pro was, re was released. They've just gone back and refreshed different lines. So now you have the Ursa Broadcast G2, which is a 6K Pro, like the 6K sensor in an Ursa body. Um, with yep. the Ursa, yeah, with the Ursa stuff. And then now you're doing the same thing. You're just like upgrading the 6K that you kind of thought you already upgraded the Pocket 6K for before. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe this one's a little, like you said, a little bit more stable without having those ND filters in it. But I, I, I just don't, um, it's, I don't know. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know what the exact thought process is, but I will say 7.9 is looking gorgeous i mean oh yeah this Let's focus get that this focus uh slider for like so you can see i get the red going with for the focus peaking um but it's now a slider mm -hmm. so that's really nice and oh, you that's can actually, much nicer and you can change it by so you see actual degree so i'm now at 70 percent for the focus peaking mm -hmm. so that's better than just low mid high yeah, so I mean that's not, I mean, <clears throat> it seems like there's some nice added features in there with the gyro stabilization stuff, which you know protected, yeah. and then a couple extra features. Like I'm glad that they're updating. Which I guess this wasn't um, an update for the Ursa G2, still was it? So we're still stuck in. Um, no, the, the even the 12K doesn't have this stuff yet, though. Um, uh, another update is now instead of just hitting this menu button here on the side. To get to the menu, you now have a little interface option up in the top uh, right corner. See, that's nice. That's nice. That's been needed. Yeah. So, like, when you're looking right at the screen, instead of searching for that button, you just tap it on there, and you're in the menu. Uh, so they made some menu improvements as well, like on the monitor screen. Instead of having that all button, you just mm -hmm. now have... LCD, HDMI, uh, viewfinder, and then basically, or uh, if you don't have the viewfinder on uh, the older models, but then you can just go through the four pages and, uh. and then say, okay, I'm going to go to the viewfinder. It stays to that same page. So you make those adjustments there that you'll be making. So that's, that's nice. Also, the other mm. really great thing that I can't believe it took them how many years has this now taken them? Because uh, let me put it this way. I made this request back, I think, 2016 when with the original video cyst, you could basically load LUTs on through the uh, update software. And every time you updated the software, it would just keep the LUTs that you had installed on the video cyst 
installed. Well, now after this firmware, every LUT that you load onto it is going to stay when you do a firmware update because it got erased beforehand. Nice. Cool. So it keeps you from, that's nice. Okay. So yes. that's, so honestly, it's more, uh, I feel like it's better. Um, it's almost more of an update for the software than it is for the camera. They just kind of threw it in here, which brings us to Patrick Sterling's. And again, has mentioned about it absolutely doesn't feel like this has been some giant release or a ton of R and D went into it. No, I mean, literally they just repackaged it and took out the, the ND filter. And again, yeah. I, I think it's kind of weird. It feels like a media dump because they released it at three 30 in the morning. They didn't tease it. Like he said here, I think it's what they just, they had it on the docket. They needed to get it out. Um, this was just a, a random good time in the middle of the, the weird time to just send it all out um, and hide it with the, the gyro release, um, which also kind of reminds me of how they did the, um, the 12 K price reduction and they just kind of just did it in the middle of the night. Um, it was, it was an overnight thing. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is normally what they would do for just a software update like this. The software update and this style at 2.30 a.m., hey, we're just going to put out a little video, talk about the new features in the firmware, talk about, ooh, hey, so we're going to have an update to DaVinci Resolve in the next day mm -hmm. or two. It's probably going to be Monday. I guarantee you it's going to be Monday. Because yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I see this almost as a foreshadowing, too, of, uh, like, I, mm, I don't want to, like, do it because I always get in trouble every time I try to, like, predict something but um i do feel like this kind of foreshadowing that they might have something else coming down the line and they just needed to get this out before then right i think like i think they there's have gonna to be have something yeah first off next month i think it was july 18th july 16th or july 18th no it was july 16th of 2020 is when they announced and released the 12k so we're getting to the two-year mark for that. So they are more than likely going to get geared up for a new update to the... They haven't really done any major Ursa mini updates except for the original 12K you know, update and then the broadcast G2. Mm -hmm. So I think there's... First off, technically the 12K does have the same gyroscope. So they mm -hmm. just have to get a firmware update for that. But imagine this. Okay, we're releasing a new Ursa mini Pro with the 12K sensor, but it's going to have CF Express. You're going to get higher frame rates, faster sensor readout. You're going to get, mm -hmm. and then, oh, as well, here's a new Ursa Micro, maybe. Which See, is. That would be interesting. Like, I don't, they, I wish they would just release a line like of cameras or announce a line, but I, I get they, that's not really how they do it. Um, no. It's a good question from Rodrigo asking if the 6K. Well, the original 6K will drop in price, or if it'll just, I think it's, it's just going to be it's discontinued. discontinued. Yeah. Uh, you're going to find a lot of these on the used market. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, and they're great cameras because, you know, what's weird is that, like, those are the cameras that you find more times being used in actual, like, movies. Like, if you go see when people are talking about using Blackmagic cameras in movies, they're not talking about any of the other cameras. They're usually, they're usually using micro cameras or they're using the 6K camera. So, this is a great yeah. crash camera for being yeah. used with an Alexa, you know, just like the Pocket 4K because it's 1,300, sorry, for the Pocket 4K. You can break the shit out of those. And mm -hmm. then like this, $2,000, well, remember with the original cinema camera, they dropped it down an elevator shaft for Expendables 2, I want to say, whichever Expendables movie it was. Now, granted, that was a more durable body than this. I actually yep. can grab mine. From over there if i wanted to but i'm not going to right now uh i think the price reduction aspect is really just on it's the this exact body mm -hmm. for the pro but except for instead you have no internal nd so yep. yeah that's I, so i mean it's really kind of interesting i mean i don't it, it, it it's weird because it's not really like an up i mean it's is it sure it's a new camera, but I mean, even the, the broadcast well, G2 now, is more interesting. We're getting close to it being three years the 6K sensor has existed. Yep. So not uh, really much of an update. E and there's and no still, higher frame rates. Yeah, it's, it didn't fix any of the rolling shutter issues. Like if this had fixed no. some of the rolling shutter issues, I would have been more excited because that's the one issue I've always had with 
picking up the 6K to use it in a run and gun situation for my stuff. Like I get it. Like I'll, I always use it on an actual, like I use it on sticks. Like it's, I don't, it's not like the best camera to use at 6K res resolution moving around a lot just because of the rolling shutter. Like you can get around it, but I'd much rather use a pocket 4K or an Ursa G2 because there's just more la like latitude with the rolling shutter with it. Um, yeah. Well, I also reach for the G2 a hell of a lot more. And, you know, recently, you know, like, oh, we want to use like, you know, just can we just use a pocket on a gimbal? And I just said, I honestly would rather just throw the Ursa Mini Pro on the steady cam. And isn't that going to be so much weight? Honestly, it's going to look better. And it did. It looked better putting this steady cam up with the G2, uh, Ursa Mini, that is. But, you know, like, Again, like the rolling shutter is terrible. I've done run and gun shoots with this, and I've been like, ugh. Even with doing stabilization, I'll I'll be curious to do tests with the mm -hmm. new stabilization thing if with this can, firmware yeah. and see if it fixes some of that. But see that 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 should have been something that was like done, I think, forever ago. That just totally makes so much sense to me. Well, they're a small company. They, you know, they're obviously yeah. stretching themselves very thin because a lot of these are firmware updates. People have been requesting for a long time too. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, but I mean, they're they're they're, they're at the point now where they've got to make some decisions. I think. Um, here, and I'll play a little bit of this video as we're talking here. Um, I think they've got to start making some decisions soon here about um, what exactly they want to do as a company because. Uh, they're doing all this stuff, but they are, they're making all this money now. I feel like they need to actually like expand in some like legitimate way here soon. Um, I don't know what that w might be, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like they're kind of getting to the point now where they could start entering the, the big leagues a little bit more. Um, and I think maybe that might come through either someone acquiring them or them acquiring um, like another company, like a lens company or something. Mm -hmm. I don't I'm know what sure you think about, about that, but yeah, I'm not sure about them acquiring a lens company really, unless they really want to do their own mount mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason. Uh, okay, so here's here's where they're giving that example of like, so for there's the that shaky footage, and yep. then we're about to see what happens when it's stabilized, and not, not that terrible. Looks great. It's honestly almost no different though than just throwing it in Resolve currently. Yep. This Here's is the, the one I think that makes the biggest difference. The this walking, walking shot. one. Yeah, because this is very shaky. This is how about how you would want it. Now, dang, that does that does fix it. And it doesn't... I mean, you can kind of... That fixes it really nicely, too. Like, it's not too yeah. bad. The only thing that, is, like, they, it's all in slow... It's all in, like, that slow-mo kind of stuff. It's all in high frame rates. So, I'd be interested to see what it could do at, like, 24 frames per second. Like... Yeah. real speed so like if you're walking and doing it can it can it adjust to that um it'll be interesting to kind of test that out but i mean it's a great option to have now if you really have some shaky shots that you need to get done i wonder though do you think it's still do you think it's just a software update or do you think they could actually um uh do you think that they could update that in some of your old files that you could pull the data from no i have it pulled up right here from on the forums Christian Lamb said uh, on the 7.9 update for pocket cameras, it will have to be recorded using cameras as running 7.9. This data gotcha. is not being recorded previously. Cool. That's good to know. Um, I kind of wondered about that. I, I figured it hadn't been, but... Um... Yeah, I yeah. I'm, I'm happy, you know, someone was right there on the forums keeping track and was like, oh, let me get this answer out there because anyone who's asking this, need, we need to have a clear answer. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, it's it's Patrick Sterling said it probably seeing the effects of real world COVID with this and the launches. through. I, I agree because I felt like that they were going to launch something at NAB and that's not just because I predicted it. But I, I did kind of feel like that they were going to, but I, just the part shortages and even asking them that question about the part shortages where they they said that they'll like have a shipment of sensors that are supposed to come in and then they'll just never come in. So, you know, there's just issues across the board with it. Um, there's issues across the, in, not just our industry of film and video, every industry mm -hmm. right now. I mean, like, yeah. I know 
we we're probably going to start seeing food shortages. Yeah, so. it's it's going to get interesting here. Um, yeah. There's so another camera channel who's doing a video on this as well said there's an image stabilization toggle switch. Now is that on DaVinci Resolve or is that in the camera? That must be in Resolve. I mean, unless they're running a Resolve update that hasn't come out yet, I don't see. I'm gonna just turn on the camera right now and I'm gonna look through. But see, that would be. It, it's too bad. Like you can't have that. Like, what's to keep it from running that process in camera? Like to automatically use this the gyro. I, yeah. So yeah. it's interesting because that is one thing that people push back on my video that I made about. Um, the gyro, the the data was the fact that um, it uh oh on the camera he says it's on the camera. Oh, um, on the camera there's a toggle. He's saying on Discord. Oh, hold on, my Discord they showed it. It is under. It's under setup. Okay. Oh I'm yeah, it's under set under setup page one right below drop from um, frame time code. Okay, I'm, I'm on there right now in the pocket 6K. I don't see that. Uh, Interesting. Me... Kurt, Kurt, um, Kurt Nell, uh, who's on the Discord, I think he's watching. How, how, let me see if I can pull up the photo of that on the other screen because I do have the yeah, Discord. Yeah, um, so I... I don't have my tilt to, and I don't even have a zoom lens, so I can't zoom in on this. And if I move this closer to the uh, actual, uh, yeah, actually, I think uh, I can hold the camera. Phone. So, but it's on the first setup page. I have date and time, uh, language, shutter measurement, flicker free shutter based on drop frame time code, and display ND filter as. And it's the same over here for the Pocket 6K OG, except for the display ND filter as. Interesting. Let me see if I can throw up this graphic. Um, so I'm going to keep looking. Uh, so that's just the function buttons. But, oh, this is something they did also add in the setup page for the Pockets. The zoom rocker direction. The uh, So basically, you know, those new... Uh, broadcast uh, handles for the zoom and focus. Mm -hmm. They added that to this menu as well. So here's the focus knob one. So they added oh, that screen. Nice. Yeah. That's so, nice. So that's all new. Uh, let's see here. So tally light, auto dim, uh, hardware, software, playback. Okay. All right. Bluetooth. Here's the, here's the photo. Got it up. Limit stabilization, really? What? I'm, let me ask. Let me see if he... I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah, other people are having it. That's interesting. Oh, uh, that was there with um, for lenses with image stabilization to turn off. I, I do remember that, so I don't know if that's internal or that has to do with the lens because I do know... I think I've seen that before. Uh, well, this is no. Well, this is the Sigma. Um, Does Takina, it only come up if there's Sigma. a stabilization lens? Interesting. I'm, I'm not sure. That's uh, yeah. That's fascinating. I, I I think I've seen that before, but I don't. Huh. Fascinating, Kurt. No, thanks for bringing that to our attention. Um, yeah, yeah I, I that's, figured that's not other people are saying it was always. Mine. Other people were saying it was always there, but it's interesting it's not being shown in yours because I do actually remember that image stabilization being there for the actual, for like, maybe it's a pocket 4K feature. It might not be a 6K Pro feature. Maybe, possibly, because I'm going to put my Sigma lens on just in case go it is a lens later. thing, but I, I yeah. doubt. That's, that's from native lens support. Yeah, you're right. Um uh, so yeah. So I'm I'm trying to think of anything else with this. Does anyone else have any questions? I mean, we got the image stable, like the the gyro data. That's fascinating on this, but it's going to be interesting to do it. I'm interested to test it out and see. I need to go and update everything. Oh, I'm <laughs> it's it's going to be interesting. Um, there. 
Yeah. yeah, Patrick Sterling, I would say, yeah, new resolve update in the next few days. Totally makes sense. Yeah. They, they said either tomorrow or the next day in the video, I promise you it's going to be next week just because of the way things go. No, yep. So, yeah, everyone keeps uh, asking about the pocket 4K cameras. Uh, I, they're not going back to the pocket 4K cameras, right? More than likely not. I think I would say I think, if there's if there's going to be another 4K, it might be like a micro camera, but maybe. I don't. It's now four years plus since the original pocket 4K was introduced. Other than software updates, uh, we've yeah. had nothing else. Uh, ironically, that was released before the OSM Mini Pro G2, and it's gotten more features than the OSM Mini Pro G2. Yep. Yep. So say what you will about that. Uh, I will say, though, for the 12K, though, they did have the gyroscope. So technically, they get the firmware update for the current 12K. You can still get that stabilization with the new for the 12K. So as long as they get the firmware update out, that's going to be really good and important for them to do. Mm -hmm. Then, so after that, I'm trying to think... I mean, that's where it's really going to be nice for a lot of people doing VFX with the 12K. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say is like that was touted as a VFX camera. So that would be the, to me, like I wasn't even expecting, it's shocking to me actually that they were able to add the, the gyro stabiliza stabilization data just from what was in there and make it actually work. Um, because I just didn't expect that. I, I thought maybe they'd add it to a new camera. Um, and they even played a little coy with me when I asked that question at NAB from them. Um, not like getting into specifics and stuff, but they must have known it was coming um, because it it's interesting. Any, yeah, I, I love that feature. The 6K camera it is what it is. It's nice to have diversity, but it's a little odd when they're saying everyone was asking for this this update to this. Was anyone ask? I I don't know if I've, I heard anyone asking for that body design without the ND filters in it. I mean, were you asking yeah. for it? Like, I don't I don't understand that statement. Like, it's a great think, line update, but, like, yeah. no one was really asking for it. The, the only person I really know, uh, Mateo, who does the buttery lots, he and I had this discussion about the fact that he bought the Pocket 6K Pro when he returned it and just prefers using his original Pocket 6K, mainly because of, uh, you know, he didn't like the internal NDs, you know. And, yeah, technically, honestly, the internal NDs, there are issues with IR pollution where, like, you know, it's not as perfect. The so many Pro G2 has better internal NDs. The 12K mm -hmm. has better internal NDs. So there's that combined with the fact that then, like, when he got it, like a lot of other people, there were a lot of screen issues. If you remember, they had the tint issues before yep. they released the update that allowed you to adjust uh, tint control fixes which i didn't buy the camera until after that update happened yeah Ugh, it makes sense okay we've got a couple questions coming in well yep another camera channel you did obviously watch our videos because we were asking for the gyro sensor data um some other people are asking us for some of the specs let me see can someone resume the updated specs there's no updated specs for the camera they took it's, out the it's ending. exactly <laughs> the same oh, they got a bigger battery there's a bigger battery yeah. supposedly i don't know what that means but, but no it's it's just the same battery as the pocket 6k pro it's just <laughs> it's a bigger battery than the canon lp battery so it's uh, which it's already know. already new but they're acting like it's new interesting uh, so it's basically you know this versus this yep um, yeah, but, well, I mean, but now it's a G2, so yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> with me, <laughs> Florian. This is incredibly important for FPV pilots, absolutely, which is why they should release a box cinema camera for Black Magic for pilot. Like, maybe there's this might be these these updates like i think even with the resolve are leading to more things like sometimes you see this stuff and it's setting up things in the future that they have to get released to set it up um oh, for, for certain i i'm actually trying to right now go back and look to see where the last update was for the original ursa mini pro because that got a firmware update uh that never I think it was in 2020 yeah but it never made it they didn't even release a 
update for the actual G2. They just nope. did one for the, and it's like, so you brought features to the Ursa Mini Pro that you never even brought to the Ursa Mini Pro G2. Yep. That's nice. Um, it's interesting. Graham made it sound like they got complaints about the internal indies that I have heard of because there's, I think yeah. they had similar in, infrared issues that they've had. They didn't put IR cut filter or whatever in it. So that was kind of an annoying thing with this. Um, and mine broke. Like, I think there were some issues with it, but I mean, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, they were asking for it. Yeah, I guess. Uh but are I don't are they gonna put this the FPV pilot's gonna put this on? I don't know. I think they were asking more for a box camera, but yeah. They are phasing out the six K body and doubling down on the six K pro too. For sure, for sure. I totally agree. I just I this feels like an update they should have had on a re release date when they did the six K pro initially. Like have have those three cameras. Like we're updating the six K you know, sensor aligned, we're going to have a normal 6K, we're going to have the 6K Pro that has the internal NDs, and we're going to have a broadcast G2 that has the same 6K sensor, but they just spread out, I don't know, it's just kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Okay, so they did not bring the uh, level, you know, so you could get like the horizon meter in the 12K, as well as the pockets, you could not, mm -hmm. they did not bring that to the Ursa Mini Pro in, what was this, August, no, June of 2020. So, wait, they did that before they, huh, interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Their update and, and schedule is so weird. It's so weird, but they did that in June of 2020, no, and they brought the, custom frame guides they brought like you know certain things to the g1 that they never brought to the g2 and then they released mm -hmm. the 12k and nothing and nothing um floppy moraz thank you for asking this wait so is the body of this new camera regular 6k or 6k pro size it is 6k pro size here it is on the screen actually um you can just see it um it's the it's the same well actually it should it should it's be the exactly same size right yeah, actually he, it's not on the he screen. pulls them out it, it, later a little bit on. later in the video, he pulls them out, and you can it, really see it's exactly the same. Same size without the internal ND filters. So it might yeah. be a little bit lighter, maybe, but not probably Possibly. not that Actually, much. Actually, more than likely, it's like an ounce or two lighter. Yep. Because you just don't have the mechanics of the internal ND then, and then, you know, you don't have the buttons either. Yeah. Two XLRs on the G2. The Ursa that, G, like... Well, they, they have two X. They have two XLRs they had, on the Ursa 6K Pro anyways. Yeah, they had a single one on the original 6K. And then on the G2, uh, just like they have on the Pocket 6K Pro, you get the two. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, it's exact again, it's the exact <laughs> same body. Daniel uh, Chow, I can't tell if this is a troll or a... Uh, why no autofocus? Uh, I mean, it has it technically has punch in autofocus, so... But there's improved focus in... I don't know what that means. Of, or, oh, you mean as far as like the... Like being able to see the focus or... Well, well, it's for touch focus. So if I turn on oh, autofocus... Oh, that's right. And, touch focus. Um, I'm going to touch on the screen here to focus on my coffee mug here. And that focused pretty quickly right to it. Okay, let me go to my hat that's behind it. That's pretty damn quick. I mean, so you guys can't quite see what I'm <laughs> you're good, doing. You're good. Um, you're good. Um, but it, it's a little bit more responsive than it was. All right, let's see. Oh, uh, man, there's a lot of... What a nice day for a live stream. Yes, new era filmmaking. It is a nice day for a live stream. I was not every day that you don't expect to get to hang out and talk with everyone's a great day. Um, Here's the thing. Has anyone gotten to test out the 7.9 update? Yes, um, Tim has. I know there's some new people I'm, that have I'm joined. I'm testing it right now. I have it on do right you, now. <laughs> do you want to you want to do a quick demo of it again while we're sitting here? Um, sure. Because I know there's some new people that have jumped on. So here... Tim's got a couple different things um, that he can show you that's updated with the actual um, software updates. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can do this and let me focus uh, closer so I can uh, There we go. Sweet. 
Perfect. I'm trying to do this in a way, but <laughs> at least. Uh, so, as you'll see, it kind of goes more with the broadcast uh, yep. G2, but you have this button up here for accessing the menu. You have uh, all this media updated page. So, you know, between SD cord, a drive, and a CFAS cord. I've got a CFAS mm -hmm. cord in there. Uh, so if I want to format, you know, edit real numbers a little bit different. So like that, this whole screen is kind of updated. It looks new. Like even the uh, the design of everything looks a little bit newer. Yeah, it does look a little bit newer. Uh, so focus peaking, you've got this really awesome slider right here. So uh, here. I'll... Nice. So, um, not a whole lot of changes for the rest of uh, this area here, except for actually. I think this brightness, screen brightness, screen, hold on, let me make sure. So this is now for screen brightness. I don't think that was in there before. No, so there's got a couple different things. Um, uh, so, and is, did any of the resolutions change? Because I know in the broadcast they have like H.265, so they have any extra like codec so, settings, which it doesn't no. look like they do. It's just B raw and ProRes, same exact options as before. Hmm. Um, so Interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm also doing this like, you know, like I didn't set up an external uh, monitor for my. No, app. you're good. This is great. Um, perfect. Yeah. I mean, so uh, that's kind of the updates with the screen right there that Tim showed yeah. us. Um, and again, like, here is the uh, page for the monitor settings. It's no longer got the all button over there. So it's just all the pages for each one but then like you go here to where you're controlling peaking and all that and you can go hdmi you can go viewfinder and it just remembers which page you're on mm -hmm. then uh the what page is looking a little bit updated too then you got preset page i don't have any presets in there. the setup page is very much um so, you know, you've got these now for some of the stuff that was in the broadcast G2. Yep. So that's just for those, uh, you know, focus handle controls that they added. So you can use this in a broadcast situation, just like the G2. Uh, Which is nice to have that. Yeah. That's cool. And then, and then actually, I think the audio page looks a little bit... Updated. Oh, it looks much it's, different. Oh, I like how they. I like how they actually have the phantom power on the actual first page because it was always annoying to have to like switch to the second page to get to the phantom power. Yeah, that that's a massive improvement. And then also, this looks much nicer and much improved here for the audio levels when you're actually doing stuff here. So I'm I'm really pleased with how that's looking. Yeah. Uh, otherwise. That's about it, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tim, for showing us that. That's, it's, ah, that's so interesting. Um, uh, oh, we do have the Mandela effect. You're right. What's the Mandela effect? Whoa. I, I just realized it was playing our live stream because it, <laughs> it cut. All right, I'll cut that out. Well, that's kind of it for that. I mean, I don't know what else to talk about with this as far as is that, but that's kind of the update. I just wanted to go live because I could have made a video on this, but it just didn't feel like enough of anything to make a video on until I actually try to um, like play with the the uh, the gyros, like the gyro stabilization settings. Um, yeah, and most so. of us can't even play with that yet, anyways, because we need the resolve update. Okay. Yeah. I exactly. Think. So, it's it's going to be interesting to see. Oh yeah, and the crank to shutter speed, because that was the thing with the Sony is the higher the frame rate you have, 
the better it works. So I wonder if there's going to be some of that in there too. So it's going to be interesting, but at least they gave it to us. It's perfect. Like people just, I mean, we just kind of needed it. So, yeah. um, and it's something that it obviously seemed to be fairly easy to give to users and stuff. But And I think especially the thing that they really didn't really talk about, other than stabilization, <laughs> motion tracking for doing, I think they're going to have more stuff going into Fusion 2 with regards to whatever gyro data you can get for being able to do camera tracking for adding like 3D elements and, yep. you know, so adding, you know, adding text to a scene, adding, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, anything else. I just got, you know, they put me on the, the black magic press release list and, uh, I just got the press release. So, but the email, yeah, the email that they send, which is funny. They always send me the email like hours after a release of something. So it's not actually like helpful because I could just go to the website and get the release by that point. Um, I, I, I used to get the emails for some reason I don't. And I'm, I'm going to my junk folder now just to see if it shows up <laughs> there. I honestly don't. It isn't breakfast if you don't have a monster. You're correct. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this seems like a good point to announce while everyone's here. On Monday, this upcoming Monday, we are going to be... And this is actually fun because we're going to have to add this camera to the list. We are doing... I'm sure everyone remembers the, uh, the ranking, the Blackmagic cameras video that I did a while back. We're doing that again. We're doing it live. Tim's going to be here. Um, we're going to have Viva Media here with us as well. And another special guest, Michael Tobin, um, who I met at NAB and have made fun of in other videos a long time. He's going to be here to talk Blackmagic cameras with us. We're going to have it set up like a bracket. We're going to rank them. Um, we're going to vote on it. Everyone in the chat group will have a vote. We're going to do a poll for each of the lineups. And uh, you guys will get a vote based on what the polling says on it. We're doing that Monday night at 8 p.m. I'm going to push that out here soon. But it's going to be fun. We're probably going to be here for a few hours talking about Blackmagic cameras, debating which camera is the best. Um, yeah, I'm so. sorry. I'm, I'm going with that original cinema camera. Nothing beats it. <laughs> so, well, we'll see what the matchups are. We're going to have some fun matchups against camera against camera. And uh, we're going to be doing that here on Monday at 8 p.m. Um, so look out for that 8 p.m. Eastern. So look out for that on our uh, channel here soon. It'll be fun. Um, we want to engage with you guys in the chat a ton as well. But uh, it's it's going to be such a fun night, I think. It's going to be great. Yeah, um, that should be fun. Yeah, especially seeing how people fall in terms of where they view cameras. Exactly, exactly. So if it goes well, we're probably actually going to do a few more of these series and some other things. Um, maybe we'll even do some for like the the best abandoned camera or something because I know everyone's been loving those abandoned camera <laughs> series that I've been doing. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of them. I mean, like that's a long list you have. Yeah. Oh, long. I mean, I got like 15 more, and I keep. I think I've even added like two or three more to it. Um, yeah. So. So the most recent one you just did was uh, the Penelope, right? Yeah, the Penelope. Yeah fascinating camera it's been a fun series to do um but i have to work my way definitely back into some more black magic content here soon but um that's kind of the announcement fun announcement monday we're doing another live stream we're actually going to be trying to bring you guys a live stream every monday we're switching up the actual release schedule a little bit to fit my <laughs> just my production release schedule um and my uh like other client work and stuff trying to figure out how to all do this so um um Thanks for everyone for watching and supporting the channel. And uh, thanks, Tim, for jumping on and in the morning, random morning, to talk about black magic cameras. Because it's, <laughs> it's like the, it's the scramble of like, wait, what's this news? Is we need to do a live stream? Quick, shower, eat. I Whoa. know. <laughs> oh, I know. Like, I woke up and I'm like, oh, really, guys? I would, did not want to have to like get up and set all this stuff up for today. And uh, um, but uh, I got some other, I got some other fun stuff coming. I'll, I'll show you. I actually got this really cool thing from. Um, um, small rig over here to my right shoulder. You can't see it, but they sent me their oh, new those light. lights. Yeah. So I'm going to be uh, testing out the lights. They're actually really nice. So I'm excited, but thank you guys for watching. Thanks Tim for being here. We'll see you guys you. Monday night. 
And uh, there may or may not be another video released in between there, but there's definitely another abandoned camera series video coming. And uh, according to the polls, it's going to be the Airy D20 D21. So oh, yeah. should be fun. It's- should be fun. <laughs> All right. All Thanks. Right.